Alright, so this is the animation that we're gonna be working on today. So let's just get going. I'm going to, well, not delete the default cube because we're gonna be making cubes anyway. Uh, let's just scale this up to a, like 10. Uh, I'm going to make it a rigid body. It's going to be passive and it's gonna be a mesh because I might deform it later. Like add walls and stuff, so convex hull will like mess with that. Uh, select the cube, move it up. So, there are two ways to do that. I'm going to be using the array modifier. You can just like copy it, copy this, copy this. Like basically do that <laughs> in a less messy fashion. I'm going to be doing it orderly. So, come over here to the modifier, add arrays. I'm going to change it to 1.1 and the count to 5. I'm going to make it smaller as well. Um, let's just add another array and this time I'm going to scale it in the Y direction 1.1 times and 5 times. Well, 1.1 distance and 5 times. And then the final array, I'm going to be doing this to the Z direction and 0 and 5 times. So now I have 125 cubes. Not that many. <laughs> so, next up, we can make this a rigid body. You can come over here, turn on rigid body, change this into a mesh as well, and you can play it. But you'll see, there's a problem. It's a single item. It's a single object. The physics engine is treating it as a single object because it is a single object. So we need to separate all of these different cubes. You can come over here, um, and you'll see, like, you can't actually select all of them. Because we haven't applied the array modifier yet. So come over here, apply the array modifier, go back into edit mode, and now you can select all of them. If you don't select, like if they're not selected by default, you can press A, and then press T to separate, and by loose parts. So that separates all of them. Easy, right? Done. Our work here is done. That was perfect. Well, it wasn't. <laughs> so let's fix that now. Let's just come over here. I'm going to extrude it downward a little bit. I'm going to make these smaller compared to like everything else. And that should not fix it. We should still have problems. As we do. That That's good. <laughs> uh, select all of them and you can apply their geometry. So set origin, origin to geometry and then you can also shift Control A, I believe. Control A and apply all the transforms. Apply all the transforms. And let's see if that fixes it. There we go. So, there is a problem though. Like, right at the start, uh, did you notice, like, as soon as I play it, the cubes will, like, go away from each other. See? They're basically pushing each other apart, and we don't want that. We want it to, like, fall in an orderly manner. You might want that. I don't. <laughs> So, to do that, we're going to come over here and we're going to set this object, like change the settings of this cube and then apply those settings to all the other cubes. So, just come over here and we're going to come over here to sensitivity and I'm just going to decrease it down to 0 0.01. It is generally not a good idea to decrease it to 0 because there is a chance that they will like fall through. So, once you've changed it for one item, how do you apply it to all of the others without like losing your mind. And well, it's easy. Just select this one item and hold shift. Select all of them. So if this one isn't like outlined in a yellow like border, it does, if it doesn't have a yellow border, what you can do is just like shift click it or just click on it and then select them all again. So just object, rigid body and copy from active. So what that does is it just copies this item's rigid body settings to all of the items. And let's go. And there's a problem. I had also selected this one by mistake. So you can come over here and change it from active to passive. There we go. Okay. So everything does seem nice. But I don't want the balls to like, like they're not balls. I don't want the cubes to like bounce that much. You can decrease the bounce settings as well. But there is another way. I'm just gonna not drop them from that high. I'm gonna go to the camera view and I'm going to rotate them along the y-axis. Ooh, their origin is over here. So just select them all, object, 
uh, set origin, origin to geometry. So I'm going to rotate them along the y axis now. And I'm going to go to front view and move them just over here. Alright, what does that animation look like now? There we go. That is much better. So now it's time to texture them. <laughs> this is the hard part because, well, it's not that hard. I want this texture to apply to all of them. But at the same time, I also want all of them to have a different color. For example, I want this one to be blue, the next one to be green, and so forth. Well, that's going to take me a long time, so there is a better way to do this, thankfully. Um, you can come over here to the shader editor, and see this base color is the one that's actually changing the colors. So let's just, ooh, not select, let's just do this. So we can keep an eye on it. And what I want to do is I want to input object info, and then input a color ramp. Uh, what does the constant look like? You know what, let's, let's take a look. So I want this to be completely red. I want this to be completely blue. And I want this to be completely green. Well, I seem to be having a problem right now. Oh, so 0.33, and this one can be at 0.67. There we go. And then we take in the random and put it in the factor, and then connect the color to the base color. Okay, and now I want to apply this material to all of the cubes. Well, it's not that hard. Just select them all, select this one last, Whatever you select last is the one that's the active item. Press Control L and make links materials. And there you have it. <laughs> um, I do want more colors. So what I'm going to do is... Ooh, that was right. What I am going to do is I'm going to come over here in the shader editor and change this away from constant and to ease. Um, R, B, G, so red, blue, green. No, green is supposed to be over there. There we go, now we have more colors. Uh, OCD is evil. Alright. And let's just play the animation again. So this is the final frame, right? But... It doesn't seem, it doesn't look that good. That's because we haven't like changed any of the other settings. We could be using a texture, but to be completely honest, this is a simple animation, so I'm not going to. I'm just going to make them metallic. I'm going to decrease the roughness a little bit, little bit to give them like this effect. Well, the reflection. <laughs> I'm going to clear coat them to give them an even better reflection. Uh, transmission? No, I don't want to make jellies. Uh, yeah, transmission doesn't work with metallic, by the way. If you want to use transmission, you'll have to turn off metallic. So, yeah, that that is fine. Okay, so I do want to, like, enclose this area. Um, there are multiple ways to do that, but I'm just going to be the lazy person over here. And I'm just going to extrude these upward. So I don't mind if they drop off from, like, the front, just don't want them dropping off over here. So let's just see what effect that had on my lights. The lighting did change a little bit. Didn't really change that much. Let's just quickly do the materials. Oh, if I do that, then the lighting changes a lot. <laughs> Alright. I'm gonna move, ooh, I can just like make it black from the back. So just apply this. Oh, oh, my bad. I guess just select the floor and add another material. Um, this one and assign that. 
it's nothing special if you do want to take a look at what I'm using for like the background and the floor you can take a look over here this is just like the basic floor actually let's just make it metallic and what happens if I do this that is way too perfect reflections no that's much better and for the background I am using these settings I can also do this all right so finally as you can see my scene looks a lot brighter and this is because I am using an HDRI um, I'm gonna link to this HDRI in the description and if you don't know how to like add it to your scenes it's not really that hard you just come over here to the world tab and you click on the background select environment texture and then just select the HDRI file I tried a bunch of different HDRIs as well and yeah I tried like textures and all sorts of different things but at the end of the day I'm just gonna settle for this because it's a lot simpler I also changed the material for the cubes and let's let me just okay I also changed the material for the cubes and I it's not metallic anymore I decreased the roughness you know let's just get it at 0.5 and I maxed out the clear code because it gives it like look at the top of this cube basically it gives that that nice shine that you get okay it's nice it's it's really nice to have um actually i'm gonna keep sheen up as well and all right now i have to render the final animation i am going to be using cycles for this because i'm gonna be away anyway so hopefully by the time i'm back the animation will be done thanks for watching and yeah gonna add the animation at the start and the end of this video.